Okay. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the class. Um, so, um, the class is about uh, DSP structures, and we are going to be learning about uh, what the DSP uh, algorithms uh, are and how they are computed. Uh, most of the class is about the computing aspects of the DSP functions. Uh, so, uh, the goal of the class is really about algorithm uh, optimizations. So, if you think about the broad objective of increasing the speed of computations, reducing energy consumption, or reducing power consumption, uh, if those are the broad objectives, and if you think about optimizations to achieve those objectives, then we can achieve those objectives at uh, two different levels. One is at RTL level and below, and this class is not about that. And the other class that I teach, uh, 5329, is all about optimizations at RTL level and below, where uh, students uh, perform optimizations by using uh, Verilog code and uh, programming through Verilog, and that this class is not about that. So, um, this class is more about that kind of optimization at higher levels of algorithms, or if you want to think about them, so-called behavioral level. And uh, so, um, okay, that, that's what the class is about, and uh, we'll start with some brief uh, introduction today about what are typical DSP algorithms, and then we will continue to talk about uh, fast algorithms. And what does the word fast signal processing algorithm mean? And if you think about how the DSP became an important field um, really by uh, the so-called fast Fourier transform uh, in uh, 1960s and 70s. And the word fast in those days had nothing to do with clock speed uh, at all. And in those days, it had something to do with reducing number of clock cycles. So if you think about the uh, microprocessors of 1960s, which had no hardware multiplier, and each multiplication operation had to be implemented by add shift operations. So for example, if the word length is 20 bits, then you go through 20 clock cycles to compute one multiplication operation. So the word fast in that context, which is fast uh, convolution, fast Fourier transform, uh, fast wavelet transform, and that word fast simply means reducing the number of multiplication operations. And the FFT, as uh, many of you know from your undergraduate class, reduced the number of uh, multiplications from order of n squared to order of n log n, and that was a huge savings. If you think about, uh, say, 1,024-point uh, FFT, or n is 1,000, that's reducing from uh, million to uh, 10,000. So that's, that's a significant uh, saving. OK, so we'll spend uh, right after the intro, we'll get into uh, how the so-called fast convolution algorithms evolved. So we'll talk about what convolution is, and then um, what's fast convolution. And then we will um, talk about um, fast parallel filtering and fast uh, Fourier transforms. We'll spend quite a lot of time on fast Fourier transforms. Um, and if you are in any industry and you are implementing something to do with a DSP, uh, a very fundamental aspect of implementing DSP today and, and really for uh, last many years has been uh, to implement DSP in fixed point, um, not in floating point, because the goal is to reduce area and power. And so that means uh, a good understanding of quantization effects and the round of error effects is very important in implementing any DSP function. So, so we'll spend some time uh, talking about uh, uh, the finite water length analysis, quantization effects, 
round of error and uh, uh, the theory of that, especially for linear systems. Uh, and, and we will then um, talk about uh, uh, quantization effects in FFTs and that kind of thing. And then um, the uh, later part of the class will be uh, about speeding up computations like recursive filters and so on. So I don't want to go into more details, um, but I think this is probably a brief intro to uh, satisfy you of what is coming. Okay, so uh, let me go to the course website and then I'll quickly walk through uh, the uh, administrative stuff and then uh, we will talk about uh, today's lecture. Okay, so um, the course uh, website on Canvas is already published, so you should be able to see that. By the way, how many of you tried to go to the Canvas site and see uh, what I have posted there? Okay, a couple of you, that's good, that's good. Okay, so let's look at quickly that. I posted homework one. Uh, you can come here and sit down and listen to me, but that's not uh, how you will learn the content. The, the really, you will learn the content by doing the homework, so. Um, okay, so. Um, textbook, the one I didn't bring today, but. Uh, Thank you. Um, let me connect the laptop. Yes, uh, I forgot about that. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, so um, um, yeah, I, I was saying that the I forgot to bring the book, but. Um, um, in fact, it should be it should be possible to listen to me, and uh, you don't really need to buy the book. Um, that said, you can download free copies of the book from internet. Don't tell the publisher that. At least, don't tell the publisher I told you that. <laughs> okay. Um, um, okay. So uh, um, there are also slides. Uh, on my website of the book, so you can definitely um, go there and if you look at, uh, let me show you where you can find uh, the slides. So if you go to publications and click on uh, books and if you go down, you will see all these chapter by chapter slides. So if you are not buying the book, this can be a resource for you, so definitely um, um, you can uh, look at uh, uh, those slides. Okay, so um, uh, I have posted here that the software used is MATLAB, but that doesn't really mean you couldn't use Python or something else. I mean, I, or for that matter, C, C++. I, it really doesn't matter to me all that much. Um, so uh, feel free to use. Uh, your uh, favorite programming language. Um, the prerequisite is the undergraduate DSP class. Um, definitely, um, if you haven't taken that class, talk to me and uh, see if you can uh, take this class or not. Um, we will be using many papers. Um, book is uh, more than 20 years old, so it's certainly uh, pretty outdated in the sense uh, what the class is. The class is not following the book. The class is following new content. Lots of new content that's uh, been published after the book was published. So, uh, grading. Um, two exams in class um, listed here. It is somewhat possible that I might move this a week from April 9th, but we'll talk about that later on. I do not wish to move this date, so this probably will stay as it is. It is uh, somewhat possible that, that April 9th will become 16th. Uh, that depends on how much I am progressing, and if I have been slowed down, then this will become 16th. We'll talk about that sometime in uh, late March or early April. 
Okay, projects, I will talk more about this and uh, probably in a couple of weeks. So, um, we'll talk about that. Okay, so uh, you can list some of the chapters and handouts. Um, okay, so we'll talk a little about the homework one and there are a couple of signals that I've posted here and uh, so um, definitely, uh, okay, I will talk about, I'll talk about what homework is and what it involves. Um, but uh, let let's uh, let me uh, start with a brief intro to some uh, DSP functions. Okay, I am looking for a better pen. And let me see. Okay. Uh, So let, let's uh, use another color pen. Okay. So, um, so typical uh, DSP functions, and many of you are familiar with uh, what those are. The so-called um, uh, FIR, finite impulse response, IIR, uh, infinite impulse response, and FFT. So, um, so these are uh, three of the common functions, and we'll certainly uh, talk about them. But but let me begin with um, the uh, inner product. So if we have two vectors, x and w, so let's say we have a vector x, x1, x2, through xn, and a vector w, um, w1 through wn. So we have two n-dimensional vectors, then the dot product or the inner product of these two vectors is x1 w1 plus x2 w2 plus up to xn wn. For sigma xi wi i equal to 1 to n. So if we have two vectors then we can compute the inner product. So uh, then if it so happens that um, the uh, this one of these, at least one of these, if this inner product here, the vector x, if the vector x is derived from uh, a time domain signal, so let's say the vector x is derived from a time, a time domain signal, so let's say this is xn, uh, xn minus 1, up to x n minus um, n uh, minus 1. So that's uh, the same n dimensional vector x. So if we have a signal x n and then I can delay these, um, this signal to get uh, the delayed signals x n minus 1 uh, through um, x. So we go through n delays. So we go through n minus 1 delays. So the vector dimension is n, which uh, means that we have the original signal sample, xn. By the way, I am assuming these are periodically sampled. So there is a sampling period. Uh, and then the uh, vector simply is the current sample, xn, plus the n minus 1 delayed samples, uh, x, uh, n minus 1, through uh, that quantity there. Okay, so now if I think about, um, if I go back instead of using the notation W, if I use uh, H,
and then add this so y n is equal to h 0 x n plus h 1 x n minus 1 up to h n minus 1 x n minus n minus 1 which is um, summed over h i x n minus i i equal to 0 to n minus 1 and that really is um, the um, so called f i r digital filter. of length n or n tap sometimes we may call either length n or n tap where tap simply means a coefficient and these are the this is tap 0 through tap n minus 1. So number of taps is n so n tap f i r digital filter so from the inner product if the vector x constitutes the current sample and past samples of the same time domain signal xn then that inner product that's why that's what i'm computing here is the uh, output uh, of the so called fir digital filter okay all right so uh, i am sure this is not new to you and uh, so it should be um, a brief review that's what this class is about and the purpose of this class is to do a brief review Okay, um, next class, I am going to start chapter 8, which is fast convolution. So, uh, that is FIR digital filter. We can also have so called IIR digital filters. Where the, uh, it is called infinite impulse response. Uh, by the way, the impulse response, if this is uh, the input fed to a digital filter, H of z um, or uh, uh, described in time domain by the uh, unit sample response H of n, com we compute Y of n and uh, uh, as uh, some of you know that the in the z transform domain, Y of z is X of z times H of z. So, that is the Z transform of input times the filter is equal to the Z transform of the product and um, um, uh, in the uh, discrete time Fourier transform domain Y e to power j omega is X e to power j omega times H e to power j omega. So, that is the Z transform domain this is the discrete time Fourier transform domain. Okay. Um, so, what is IIR? So, the filter if length of the impulse response is equal to infinity, then uh, that is called uh, HN is IIR, infinite impulse response. And a very simple example, by the way, going back to our previous filter here, in the FIR case, in the FIR case, this is N tap FIR, I can certainly say the N tap FIR is HN um, okay. for the FIR case, we can uh, say that HN is H0 delta n plus H1 and delta n minus 1 plus H n minus 1 delta n minus n mm -hmm. minus 1 and if you plot that as n this is H0 H1 some uh, and 0 0 uh, before and after. Okay, so that's the plot, and you can also write h of z is equal to h zero plus h one z to power minus one plus h two h zero plus h one z to power minus n minus one. Okay, so uh, so this is f i r. So the number of uh, so as you can see, the number of uh, the length of the filter is finite. 
That's why it's called uh, NTAP FIR filter. That's why it's called finite impulse response. Uh, so to go back to the IIR example, uh, let's talk about a very simple example, which is a one-pole IIR filter. And if I take one-pole IIR filter, and uh, let's say that H of Z is 1 over 1 minus A Z to power minus 1, which has a single pole. If you solve the denominator equal to 0, you get Z equal to A. And if the filter is going to be useful at all, then the filter A, a pole at location A, uh, has to be such that it's uh, inside the unit circle. Um, so it could be, uh, well, if it is a complex filter, then it could be anywhere. Um, um, Inside the unit circle. Uh, so okay. So um, so I can write that one my one by one minus <coughs> recall one by one minus x is equal to the geometric time series one plus x plus x squared plus x cube, and this is an infinite geometric time series provided absolute value of x is less than one. Otherwise, it would be uh, divergent. Okay. So, um, so we can then say this is equal to 1 plus a uh, z to power minus 1 plus a squared z to power minus 2 plus a cube z to power minus 3. And that means the now the h filter, h of n, is going to be uh, 1 a a squared a cube and will, uh, will be of length infinity and that's why it's called infinite uh, length filter or the infinite impulse response filter. Okay, so um, uh, I can also describe uh, this filter here in terms of a block diagram. By the way, your lecture notes, I'll post them as well on the canvas site after the class. Uh, so um, if I write down y of z over x of z is 1 over 1 minus a z to power minus 1, and then you cross multiply, and then take the inverse z transform. So you get y n minus a y n minus 1 is equal to x n or y n is equal to a y n minus 1 plus x n. And uh, that can be described by uh, a block diagram. If this is the input x n and then I add to that a times y n minus 1 and that computes then the output at time n y n and I can compute, uh, uh, I can get y n minus 1 by delaying the uh, output y n by one sample delay multiply by a and that's a y n minus 1. And the main difference between the FIR and IIR filter is that this has um, a feedback loop and that's kind of uh, uh, a fundamental property of IIR filters because the current output is a function of not just the input but the past outputs as well. Whereas in case of um, FIR, the current output is a function of current input and delayed inputs. And this output is not a function of, um, this output is not a function of past outputs. Okay, so um, all right. So um, let me talk uh, briefly about uh, um, FFT Okay, so if I go back to uh, So if I go back to um, 
what we were talking about here, namely the uh, the in the so-called spectral domain or the discrete time Fourier transform domain, the spectral representation of the output y is equal to the spectral representation of input x and the uh, that of uh, the filter h. Okay, so. Um, but that's really not how we typically compute the so in this discrete time Fourier transform representation. Uh, we cannot really take advantage of the so called fast uh, algorithms. So, in order to um, compute uh, efficiently the convolution, uh, we can make use of FFT and FFT is not exactly same as the discrete time Fourier transform, but under certain conditions, uh, the FFT can really equivalently compute the uh, DFT. So, so my objective is to compute y n is equal to x n convolved with h n. Okay, so that's kind of uh, the goal here. The signal x n uh, processed uh, through the filter computes. Uh, the output signal y. So, y <coughs> is the uh, convolution, time domain convolution of x and h. Okay. So, uh, uh, we can't compute this exactly by FFT, but under certain conditions, uh, we can compute uh, the con so called linear convolution. Uh, the word convolution uh, is uh, uh, simply uh, sometimes called linear convolution and we use the word linear only when uh, we want to differentiate this from uh, FFT. So, uh, so let us say that we have a certain signal x n. So, x n and h n are uh, n point sequences. Okay. So, then we compute x k which is a DFT of x n. We compute h k which is the DFT of h n and then I compute some y k which is the product of the two DFTs. And then I compute something y n, which is the inverse DFT of y k. And uh, this y n is going to be equal to the so called n point circular convolution of x n and h n. Okay. And that is really why we differentiate between uh, this convolution and that convolution because that is a circular convolution. Okay, so, um, then okay, one might say okay, well then the DFT is not useful because it is not computing x n linear convolution h n, but it is computing circular convolution of h n, but under certain conditions the circular convolution is equal to the linear convolution. Okay. So, um, so for example, uh, if let us say that x n is uh, n point sequence. So, I have an n point sequence h n is a l point sequence. So, that means it is a L tap filter. L tap FIR filter. Then the x n, okay, I, um, I, I could say this is y tilde n to uh, differentiate from the linear convolution. So, um, y n is of length what? 
any volunteers what is the length of uh, yeah plus l minus 1 yeah good ok it is uh, n plus l minus 1 point ok. So, so if I take the x n n point sequence and then append l minus 1 zeros. So, take the n point sequence and append l minus 1 zeros and that becomes a n plus l minus 1 point sequence. Take h n and append uh, n minus 1 zeros. So, then the h n becomes n plus l minus 1. So, now both x and h are n plus l minus 1 point sequences. So, now compute n plus l minus 1 point d f t d f t is let us say x k and h k. So, now x n the so called appended or padded you will hear the word 0 padding the padded uh, sequences x n and h n are of length n plus l minus 1 and then compute uh, y tilde n which is the n plus l minus 1 point i d f t. So, this is the d f t inverse now of y k. So, let us call this y k of that y k and uh, this is uh, length n plus l minus 1 and indeed I am not going to prove this today, but and indeed you can then show that circular convolution. So, the n plus l minus 1 point circular convolution ok. So, I can write that as equal to x n n plus l minus 1 point circular convolution of h n is going to be simply the uh, linear convolution of uh, x and h. So, um, so that is really the reasoning why we use d f t uh, instead of uh, the convolution because we are trying to a simple uh, n a simple x convolved with h how many how many computations are involved if this is n point and this is l point how many multiplications are involved in computing the linear convolution x convolved with h any volunteers n times l n times l. So, I have an n point sequence ok let, let us just take a quick look. So, um, let us say that x n is equal to um, so let us say x n is 3 point and h n is 2 point. So, x z is x 0 plus x 1 z to power minus 1 plus x 2 z to power minus 2 h z is h 0 plus h 1 z to power minus 1 y z and if you take the product of a 3 term polynomial of degree 2 and a 2 term polynomial of degree 1. So, that is going to be x 0 h 0 plus x 0 h 1 plus x 1 h 0 z to power minus 1 plus how many z to power minus 2 terms x 1 h 1 plus x 2 h 0 and 1 z to power minus 3 term. And you can see here, but we do not need to see here. I mean, this is 1 multiply, 2 multiplies, 2 multiplies, and 1 multiply that is adds to 6, but we do not need to see that here. So, a product of a uh, polynomial containing 3 terms and another containing 2 terms is 3 times 2 6. So, we have to do the cross multiply, and that is a total of 6 terms. So, n uh, point uh, convolved with L point n point convolved with l point 
will require n l so this in simply time domain convolution this will require n l multiplications okay now uh, by appending these things and computing n plus l minus 1 um, I am not going to talk a lot more today about counting multiplications here, but typically we would uh, pad more zeros if necessary. So, the so called FFT algorithms are more useful when the number of uh, points here is power of 2. Uh, so, to give you one example, let us say uh, n is 10. So, let us say n is 10 and l is 3 then n plus l minus 1 is uh, 12 points. So, nobody computes a 12 point FFT. So, uh, take the nearest power of 2 and that would be 16 point, uh, which means that do not pad this with 2 zeros, pad this with 6 zeros and uh, pad this with uh, 13 zeros and they all become then 16 points and then do the 16 point FFT. Okay, so, um, 16 point. So, pad zeros to make the 16 point. Okay, so that is, uh, so how does the FFT reduce the Okay, by the way, so FFT computes DFT. So, uh, a common misconception is that FFT is a Fourier representation or a Fourier transform, which it is not. It is simply a fast way to compute the so called discrete Fourier transform. So, FFT itself is not a transform, it is simply computing the so called discrete Fourier transform using so called fast approach which is reducing number of multiplications. Okay, uh, before I proceed with uh, FFT, any questions? Okay, so, um, so we define x k the uh, n point uh, FFT of uh, the time domain signal x n. Okay, so um, and given so this is the FFT given the um, the so-called FFT coefficients or the FFT samples, I can reconstruct or obtain the time domain signal x n which is 1 over n summed over x k and take the conjugate of that plus j 2 pi over n k n now summed over k equals 0 to n minus 1. Okay. So, uh, a straightforward computation of x k if I assume x n is a complex signal. So, x n has a real part and an imaginary part and this has a real part and an imaginary part. So, each product of a complex number by another complex number will require 4 real multiplications. So, one complex multiplication uh, is equivalent to, so if x n is complex, then x k requires, so this is 4 summed over n times, so 4 n and then compute this for n times because I have to compute for 0 to n minus 1. So, that requires 4 times n squared real multiplications. 
or I could say n squared complex multiplications, which is the same thing. And quickly we will see how that 4 times n squared can be 3 times n squared, but let us not worry about that today. Okay, so, um, so how can we reduce this complexity from n squared to n log n or order of n log n? Okay, so um, the very basic idea of FFT is very similar to uh, the so called divide and conquer algorithms. You take a large problem of size n and divide that to two smaller problems of size n by 2 and then recursively keep doing that. Okay, so what I am trying to do now is to express the n point DFT uh, xk in terms of two and we will uh, uh, do a little more algebra but this will be uh, uh, this will be computed by one n by two point at dft and this can be computed by another uh, n by two point dft so uh, so the goal is to uh, use two n by two point dfts to compute 1 n point dft so that's really um, that's that's the essence i mean it's a simple divide and conquer algorithm which is used in many many algorithms um, okay so um, uh, the, by the way this whole dft was uh, you know, we talk about, of course, the Kulituki uh, FFT, um, um, but uh, historically, this is uh, a rediscovery of uh, the FFT by Gauss. It was known to Gauss more than 200 years ago. Okay, sometimes ideas are rediscovered and there is nothing wrong and in fact, uh, it is always a good thing to be able to rediscover. Um, okay, so, um, so what have we done? We have taken this point by, so if n is 0 and that corresponds to r equal to 0 here. If n is 1, the next term and that corresponds to the uh, 2r plus 1, when r is 0, this is x1, when n is 2, r becomes 1 x 2 when n is 3 r becomes 1 2 times 1 plus 1 is x 3. So, we have essentially taken the n point sequence x n and divided that into two different sequences the even sequence x 0 x 2 x 4 x 6 x 8 etcetera and the odd sequences. So, so this DFT containing 
um, n terms is exactly equivalent to uh, these n by 2 terms containing the even samples plus these n by 2 terms containing the odd samples. Okay. So now, uh, if you look at, so this x2r really contains half the number of samples. So this will contain x0, x2, etc. Okay. Uh, uh, 2xn by 2 minus 1. Okay. So, uh, um, well, 2 times n by 2 minus 1, which is xn minus 2. Uh, I have assumed n is even at least. Okay. If not power of 2, but n is even. So, for this 2 arc, n is even. Okay. Uh, it becomes power of 2 when you apply the same concept of uh, divide and conquer recursively and go down to 2 point dft, which is the butterfly. Okay. At that point, we would uh, assume n to be power of 2. Okay, so but but not in this equation. This equation simply assumes uh, n is even. Okay, um, now so I have an n pi two point. You can think of it as um, uh, x prime n or something. It doesn't matter. Uh, and then um, if I want to call uh, this, um, so if I take this two, take that two, and make this n by two. So now think about what we have here. So we have some sequence of length n by 2, summed over 0 to uh, n by 2 minus 1, e to the power minus j, twice pi by number of terms, which is n by 2, kr. kn or kr doesn't really mean very much. So this term here is nothing but the n by 2 point dft. So this is first sum is equal to n by 2 point dft of x to r or the even samples. Okay. So how can we describe the second term by n by 2 point dft of something. So I can take the second term So first we bring out that plus 1. So this can be written as e to power minus j twice pi over n k times 2r times e to the power minus j 2 pi over n k times 1. So e to the power a plus b is e to the power a times e to the power b. And if we write that as k times 2r and k times 1, which is just k, and then this term here does not depend on the summing index r. So that can come outside the sum. So this becomes e to the power minus j twice pi over n k times summed over 0 to n by 2 minus 1 x 2 r plus 1 e to the power minus j twice pi over n k times 2r. Okay, so and then I can do the same thing that I did before, which is take that 2 out and place that as in the denominator as n by 2. Okay, so, um, so what do you see uh, this term here? So this term here is the n by 2 point dft of the odd samples. So if I take the even samples and the odd samples and compute their dfts separately and then I can go back to that equation here 
x k. So, let us call this uh, first sum as uh, g k. Well, if you think about um, this x 2 r as a new sequence called g r and this as h r and then we can call this h k and then x k is equal to uh, g k plus e to the power minus j twice pi over n k times h k where these are the two n by 2 point DFTs of the odd and even samples. Okay, so, um, for this equation to be valid, the index of k must be limited to 0 to n by 2 minus 1. Okay. Why is that? Because uh, these are n by 2 point DFTs. So, this k can only be up to 0 to n by 2 minus 1. Now, what happens if k is greater than n by 2 minus 1? Any thoughts? Okay, so uh, I can compute x n by 2 plus k. So, let us say that I want to compute x n by 2. Uh, so, x n by 2 plus k will be g n by 2 plus k plus e to power minus j twice pi over n times n by 2 plus k times h n by 2 plus k. And any thoughts about what is this quantity? Any volunteers? G and H are n by 2 point DFTs. So, they can be thought of as periodic with period n by 2. So, this is the same as G k. H is also same as H k, H n by 2 plus k, because these are periodic with period n by 2. And then, if you multiply by two terms, the first multiplication, so e to the power minus j twice pi over n times n by 2 times e to the power minus j twice pi over n times k and the n and n cancel out minus 2 and 2, 2 and 2 cancel out and we get e to the power minus j pi which is minus 1. So, this is equal to g k minus e to the power minus j twice pi over n k h k. So, together, together this equation um, and this equation So, together these two equations can compute the n point d f t x k from the n by 2 point d f t s of the even and odd samples. Okay. So, basically this says that take the even samples n by 2 point even samples, take the odd samples and compute these d f t s which are called uh, g k n by 2 point d f t s. and h k and then this uh, term here, this term here e to the power minus j twice pi over n k is the so called twiddle factors. So, this is the so called twiddle factors. Okay. So, then we, we merge using 
So, then okay, the twiddle factors here multiply these by twiddle factors. And then we have h k e to the power minus j twice pi over n k. And then do the add and subtract and merge these two and that is where the butterflies come in and then we get n point x k. Okay, so, that is kind of a high level diagram of the n point d f t computed using 2 n by 2 point d f t s and if you recursively use that idea use this compute this by 2 n by 4 point compute this by 2 n by 4 point and keep on doing that and ultimately we uh, get down to 2 point d f t and the 2 point d f t if I have a 2 point d f t a and b of sequence a and b what is the 2 point d f t that is computing a plus b and a minus b and that is uh, basically called the um, butterfly. So, if I have a and b then this is computing a plus b and a minus b this is the 2 point d f t and uh, this b has a minus 1 and uh, so then we get a minus b and this is called a simple 2 point d f t is called a butterfly. Okay, I think this is a good point for me. We will talk a lot about f f t s in this class because I want to talk about how to reduce the number of multiplications in general uh, particularly when the signal is real. Um, also, also uh, I have just shown one example of um, f f t here. Um, so, when you think about the so called Cooley to key f f t um, there are two, two uh, types of f f t s. You probably have heard of the decimation in time and decimation in frequency. So, this is the so called decimation in time d i t and why is that? because I have taken this uh, time domain signal x n. So, if you think about take the time domain signal x n decimate that to get the even and odd. So, we are performing the decimation here in the time domain the frequency domain signal is here. So, um, the other alternative is not to decimate this x n, but rather compute. So, what I have shown here is the starting point of what I did was to compute uh, this sum by dividing that into two sums an even part and an odd part. Instead of doing that, instead of doing that, if I can compute explicitly if I can compute. So, if I take x k is equal to so, so, instead of computing this from 2 n by 2 point d f t is we are going to compute explicitly the even d f t is and the odd d f t is. So, instead of instead of think about the down sampling here or the even and odd part these are in time domain. So, instead of that if I explicitly substitute k is equal to 2 r not n is equal to 2 r and 2 r plus 1 which are uh, down sampled in time domain or decimated. So, we compute explicitly x 2 r and we compute explicitly x 2 r plus 1 and express both of these as again in terms of 2 n by 2 point d f t s and that would be called um, decimation in frequency f f t or d i f and uh, they have the same complexity and in fact, as we move along we will try to see that if you think about them as a matrix operation the d i f structure 
can be obtained by transposing the DIT and we will talk more about that uh, later on. The transpose operation has a meaning and we will get to it probably in a few weeks. Okay, um, so let me stop with uh, this intro to uh, convolution, inner product convolution and then uh, the FIR and IIR filters. So I want to spend a little time on uh, this so called correlation and power spectral density. Um, these terms may be new to you, um, but, 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 uh, but let us just quickly go through that. Um, okay, so um, So let me briefly talk about what I am expecting you to do. Uh, so first few homeworks, these are somewhat review. Aha, uh -huh, I forgot, I should spend a little time, at least a few minutes on uh, something before I get to what I want to talk about, the autocorrelation. Okay, so the this one has some digital filters. It says compute these transfer functions. Uh, the second problem is describe each filter in problem 1 by state space representation and then derive their transfer function. So let me spend a little time on that. I am glad that I saw that because I had forgotten about it. Okay, so a lot of the uh, digital filters can be described by what are known as state space representations. Okay. Um, so, um, so think about each delay as really a state. Okay, that's kind of a very simple thing because if you are writing a uh, software program, then you would have to initialize those state variables. Okay, if you think about discrete time systems are described by difference equations and every difference equation can be solved by initial conditions on the um, time domain, um, um, well, to get the time domain solution. So, to s so if I take the simple FIR filter ex as an example, let's take a three-tap FIR filter. So this is X n, H zero, H one, H two. Okay, so um, so let's call these state variables x one, n, x two n. Okay, so um, these state variables are x one n and x two n. So I can then say that x one n is equal to x n minus 1, x 2 n is equal to x 1 n minus 1 and the output y n is equal to h 0 x n plus h 1 times x 1 n plus h 2 times x 2 n. So, these are so, these two here are the state of date representation. So, if these two are the two states, so the output of every flip flop or every delay element is a state that is being updated every clock cycles. So, that is the notion of a state of date representation. State of date means the state is being updated every clock cycle. Uh, that means every uh, clock cycle I am sampling a new sample and uh, computing a new output sample, but in the process I am feeding this x to the right 
Um, so, uh, we are updating these states. So, I can say that, um, so the state x1 n, x2 n, so the state vector and our two flip flops are two delay elements. Each delay element is a state. So, the state vector x1, x2 is equal to the previous state which is x1 n minus 1, x2 n minus 1 plus some uh, column vector times the input x n. So, it says x 1 n is x n minus 1. Okay. I am going to just make this uh, x n minus 1 here. Um, well, I, I guess um, I could take the input x n minus 1 as the input to the, yeah, okay. So, um, so x 1 n is x n minus 1, okay. So, that is the first state update. The second one x 2 n is x 1 n minus 1. Okay. So, that is called the state update. In fact, it does not really matter if I take this uh, n, if I replace that by n plus 1, x 1 n plus 1. So, the next state, if I take the current state at time n, update to next state at time uh, n plus 1. Okay. So, now in fact, uh, I, I am able to describe this in terms of the current sample x n. Okay. So, I could, okay, I could instead of calling these states x 1 n, x 2 n, I could call this x 1 n plus 1 and x 2 n plus 1, I could, but I did not do that. But if I did that, then I would uh, get this right away. Um, but that is okay. That is okay. It does not matter. And then from the output, y n is equal to h 1 x 1 h 2 x 2 plus h 0 times the input x n. Okay. So, um, so, in general, we would describe a state update vector, the state vector x. If there are n flip flops or n delays, there would be n states. This would be a vector containing n states. x n plus 1 at time n plus 1 is a n by n matrix A, the state transition matrix. It is transiting from time n to time n plus 1 a times uh, the state vector x plus some b vector, this is n by n, this is a column vector n by 1 times the input x. y, the scalar output y is equal to, this is scalar, input x is scalar. This is a row vector of dimension. Um, so, in general, we would call this C transpose y is equal to C transpose y is equal to C transpose x n. So, C is a column vector, C transpose is a row vector plus some d times input x n. So, so we can describe any arbitrary digital filter by a state space representation such that the next state vector x n plus 1 is a state transition matrix A times x n plus B times input x n. Uh, it is a little confusing, but this is a vector, this is a scalar. Um, people usually uh, use u n as the input in this case not to be confused with x n, uh, but I have used these states x 1, x 2. So, that is not a 
exactly x. Uh, so uh, keep that in mind. Y is C transpose xn plus dxn. So every state space digital filter can be described by a, b, c, d. Now what happens if there is an i, i, r filter? Um, so let's say that I have a second order i, i, r digital filter. So this is a so-called second order bi-quad filter. There are two feedback loops, the inner loop and the outer loop. And I do suggest you try to go through this. Uh, so if you think about the uh, transfer function h will be y over x uh, will be, if you think about the forward part, so the forward part is going to be c from the input x. Uh, so first of all, if you, the easiest way to write that down, which I don't necessarily want you to do, but the easiest way to, this is the IIR, the all pole part followed by the all zero part, but if you switch them, zero part followed by pole, so this will be C plus DZ to power minus one plus EZ to power minus two divided by the pole part, which will be one minus A z to power minus 1 minus b z to power minus 2. Okay. So, um, so if these two flip-flops or two delays, uh, if we call them state vector state x1 and state x2, so this is x1n and x2n, uh, or actually let me take this as x1n plus 1, the next state and x2n. So, that means this is x1n. Well, actually, no, no. Let's let let's let's keep this as n. Let let's keep this as n. We'll see what happens. Okay. So um, so x one n is equal to so this quantity here is equal to a times so this is a times so think about so this is equal to z to power minus one that quantity times um, a times x one n plus b times x two n x two n uh, plus input x n that whole thing multiplied by z to power minus one x two n is equal to x1 n minus 1 y n is equal to c times this signal here is this quantity here which is fed back. So c times that plus d times x1 n plus E times X two N. Okay, so um, so if I want to express that as a state space uh, representation. So once again, if I take this x1 n plus 1, the next state vector and x2 n plus 1, and then this z to power minus 1 will go away n plus 1, okay. Well, I am actually, okay, I am actually abusing notation which I shouldn't be doing because this is a time domain. So this shouldn't be here. These should be now instead minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. Okay, and if I add plus one, so this becomes a 
a times so add plus one to all n a times x one n plus b times x two n plus add one to that you get x n one times that x two n plus one is equal to x one n and then the output y n is equal to okay so if i add um so y so really this is uh, c times this is x1 n so what do you think is this quantity here what do you think is this quantity here okay so that quantity any thoughts about what is this quantity if the delayed version of that is x1 okay we have run out of time uh, so i will complete this next class and then we'll walk over your homework and then spend maybe 10 minutes or so talking about uh, autocorrelation and power spectral density and then we'll talk about fast convolution which is uh, chapter 8 okay see you yeah yeah they are all published uh, published uh, take a look and see you have computer now do you let me just take a look uh, yeah homework one is showing published yeah. okay read that yeah yeah okay